Well, on one hand, uh, I could talk about things that I will be presenting tomorrow uh, at, uh, at, at my ELEX talk, but, but because I, and which relate to uh, what uh, we tried to exploit at the training school, that is um, automating the whole dictionary process, dictionary creating process. But obviously, because I don't want to make, uh, I want you to come tomorrow, don't want to spoil my own talk, I tried and decided to take a, say, a bit broader look at then, now, and next, right? So, um, it was tools and, tools and methods, so we look at the tools and methods, and uh, there will be some small outlook into the future, um, despite the obvious caveat that, you know, predicting is hard, especially what concerns the future. So, tools. Um, now, what do our tools look like, right? Uh, I think, I'm afraid, a lot of times they look like that, right? Um, dirty, a bit rotten, not really well organized. And um, then when people start using them, it makes the feeling like, you know, f five minutes after you want to wash your hands and try doing something else, right? Um, why is that? Um, I think we have to acknowledge the fact that uh, lexicographers are the community of users of these tools, not producers, right? So. Um, it's obviously not our fault, not ours, if I declare myself a lexicographer, which I'm obviously not. Um, it's the same, I would say, all over the natural language processing and uh, probably also in other fields where emerging technologies apply uh, or, or are, creating, uh, are created uh, in a, say, unorganized, um, random, uh, but also very, say, um, uh, enthusiastic way. What you would like our tools to look like would be probably something like that. Right? Very clean, polished, you see the sizes at every piece of the things that I hardly can name in Czech, not to talk about them in English. Uh, so that you know whenever you want to do something which size you should choose and you have the nice feeling of you know engineering here and there um, even though you are not an engineer. Um, okay, so now that was the tools. Now the methods. Um, and that goes, in my point of view, you know, first to the algorithms, which, whatever they are, might be complex or not. Um, I hope and I would wish that this is something that lexicographers would not necessarily need to take care about in, in the close future, right? Um, a lexicographer doesn't really need to know details about how, pa how part of speech tagging works or uh, whatever other, you know, bright new technology like neural networks uh, uh, we or anybody else is going to exploit in order to make the uh, dictionary drafting or dictionary creating process more efficient. Um, anyway, these methods are then exploited back into the tools, right? So it's the tools that we are interested in. But how do we actually use these tools, right? How we use the tools? Um, you know, sometimes it looks like that um, because, um, you know, especially when the tools are dirty and especially when there is nobody to tell us how to use them, we end up, you know, doing a little bit here and there and at the end of the day we think like, hmm, there is not a lot of things that have been actually done. We would rather imagine doing something like that moving fast forward, uh, have the feeling that the tools really help us uh, achieving what we want to do. Um, and, well, related to that is what the lexicographers were then and what they are now, right? Um, we all know this picture. Uh, we all know where it comes from um, and the context of the, of the whole, whole era and of the whole story. Um, what I think that lexicographers should look like, might look like, maybe even do look like at a moment would be something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Equipped with tools, um, gem, you know, gender balanced, <laughs> um, also a bit younger, <laughs> a bit more sexy probably. Uh, but, you know, let's focus on the tools, right? Um, James Murray had a bunch of guys who he as far as I've heard, was re really tough on. And um, we are not going to have the same amount of people that he had. 
Uh, instead, we hope that we will have the tools. Um, and where we go with, uh, with, with these tools? I hope that we go somewhere like that, right? People watching uh, smart machines doing something. Uh, I hope, I don't need to emphasize that, but uh, occasionally people, uh, pe people, people keep asking about it, like, uh, and it, especially people who are also related to the translation domain where this has been a big topic. You know, will machine translation make translators jobless? Yeah. Uh, some localization ag agencies and translation agencies I was talking to were telling me, you know, for us it doesn't make any sense to compare human translation and machine translation because whenever you tell the people what is coming from the machine translation, they will claim it is bad even though it would be good because they are simply afraid that then the machines will substitute them. Uh, I don't think this is true. Uh, by the way, if you look uh, at some of the figures published uh, by the Global Localization Gala, Global Association for Localization and something, uh, the, mar the, trans the whole translation business uh, over the past 10, years, past 10 years is just rising. People do translate more, they invest more time, into, uh, more, more time and more money into localization and translation, and there is you know, nothing on the horizon like translators becoming jobless. Right? And in the context of lexicography, I think this is a, you know, sometimes people ask, so will there be any, you know, space for lexicographers? I'm sure there will. Uh, and I hope that the space will be more convenient for them in terms of being able to focus on the more intellectually demanding and more intellectually interesting task than, say, um, you know, going through a headword list and ticking words or something like that. And, um, you know, this is, of course, some uh, imagination, but it might not be that far from what I hope that the future will look like. And now the, you know, <laughs> the most important question possibly is, to how, is how to get there. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay, this is the result of the conversion <laughs> from, uh, to PowerPoint, so please pardon the, uh, the icons. Uh, I spent so much time trying to figure out what the icons sh should look like. So the first one is ob obviously a ticked checkbox. And uh, that is building a community. And that I see as the most important contribution of DNL, right? And the TICT, I think, stands for, and I hope, this is something that I consider work done. Uh, I find it really important because in a, for, for a, uh, for in a field like lexicography where uh, questions of open access and trust and sharing are so important, having a good community which is uh, you know, emphasizing good practices and developing the whole thing is so important. Then, uh, you know, integrating the current bits and pieces together. Uh, the icon was uh, something like work in progress, and I will show a few slides uh, later what uh, we are doing in, in this regard, and there, is plenty, there are plenty of other people working in that field. Uh, the third is build it, building an open infrastructure, and that is basically already an introduction for uh, Simon's talk after me, uh, because that is the goal of Alexis. Uh, the fourth, keeping things simple, modular, and flexible. I think that's a big danger when trying to building infrastructures and frameworks and big facilities and whatever we will call that, that uh, things become um, huge uh, beasts that are not manageable, not usable in terms of the bureaucracy, in terms of practical things that they, that they stand on and so on. And, uh, but I think there are lots of people in, in this room who have big experience uh, in you know, uh, <coughs> managing, say, huge things, so I hope that we will, uh, we will avoid that. And the final thing is sort of coming out. Uh, I came to this idea last, last week when I was lecturing here at the Lexicon, which we had before, and um, uh, this relates to, you know, you know I, I really understand the hesitation of Michal the, in terms of trying to, you know, starting a big marketing now for the European Dictionary Portal. Uh, because, it, you know, on one hand, it's an excellent result of DNL. On the other hand, it still mainly focuses on scholars. And uh, this coming out uh, for me stands uh, for trying to uh, say open the whole business and open the dictionaries to wide public um, in terms of access, in terms of uh, usage, in terms of all kinds of things. Uh, you know, there is I, I I think, and that's still my also impression from 
um, you know, 10 years back, 15 years back, before I, uh, I started working for lexical computing. Uh, people have very limited knowledge about what is behind uh, when they open a dictionary. Now they don't open a dictionary, of course, okay, but still when they <coughs> open the app, that stands for a dictionary. And so I think that this coming out is part of the business and it make, can make the field more attractive, uh, which might be also important in terms of funding and stuff like that. Uh, and after the coming out, I think we can start with the marketing because when we talk about social networks, uh, we can start tweeting and liking on Facebook and whatever, but uh, yeah, let's look at us. We will end up with 300 likes. That's it, right? I'm, I'm afraid. Um, so yes, that's, that's the final step. Um, okay, now just a few things as a as an PR for, for the coming days. Uh, Simon will be talking about Elexis just after me and there will be a round table at Elex. Uh, I will be presenting the new Sketch Engine interface on Wednesday and that can be considered to be a part of the coming out of uh, making our tools uh, more e easier to use by, by, by lay people, easier to use by language learners, etc. And I will have tomorrow uh, talk on, a, on what, what, I'm, what we market as one-click dictionary, uh, but what it really is uh, automating the dictionary creation process uh, as a kind of welcome to the age of post-editing lexicography where dictionaries get automatically drafted from a corpus which is annotated and processed by, uh, by further tools. And then lexicographers already work on, uh, on, uh, on the existing draft, uh, which is, of course, necessary, right? Uh, here is a screenshot from the new Sketch Engine interface just to warm you up a little bit. And uh, here is the most important button in the world, which makes the one-click dictionary. Um, that's it, I think. Uh, I have a very innovative final slide. Uh, I liked the one by, Ma by Michal so much that I just repeated it. A lot has been done. I, I think the NL has been a very successful, uh, so successful project, but there is more to do. That's all. <coughs> Thank you, Milos. Uh, well, <coughs> that was an interesting introduction. <laughs> I mean, description of the... <laughs> Basically, the last line was about what we did at uh, the training school, but um, I think the result is actually the, uh, that button that you described. So, you made your presentation short, so we have about two minutes for uh, questions, if somebody <laughs> has questions also yeah. for Luis. Uh, the two presentations, Ilan. <laughs> no, that title is entirely underrated. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do I remember correctly its method, tools and methods for innovative dictionaries? And I was wondering, wasn't the innovative regarding tools and methods rather than about dictionaries? No, Sorry no, no. for I, the I question. I think the innovative is really a modifier of dictionaries there. Uh, if, it should be, if it should be a modifier of the tools and methods, then... Uh, then I think it's mainly about going from, come on, come on, come on, you are slow. It's going from here to there, right? Uh, and that's, that's, a, that's a task for, for, for us, for the engineers, right? I mean, uh, from a certain perspective, we haven't often done a very good job for lexicographers. If I look at it really from the user's point of view, then uh, you know, there are tons of things being researched and produced and published, now even you know, open source and so on. But uh, uh, the, the step, the gap between uh, the developers and the users is often so big that uh, the exploitability is simply too, too low. Yes. Uh, Well, it's yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, but by all means, but uh, f uh, you know, in terms of finding user needs and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, lexicographers can't make 
the tools easier to use and um, you know better and more suitable for particular use cases, right? So that it, those tools then need to be amended by somebody else. Best case, those people who produce them. But you know. theory. Uh, yes, <coughs> thank you. Short uh, one. Uh, very short. Uh, but the answer might be longer, but, but <laughs> we, can <laughs> have it we can have it uh, later. So I was wondering from the new technologies you mentioned, I mean, yeah. not that are all new, but this word embeddings uh, seems to be something delivering a lot of information. I was wondering what kind of information you can win for this lexicographic project, which you would not get. For one click dictionary or for which one? Sorry, I might not. For lexicography in general. Sorry, I didn't get it. Can you repeat? Okay. What's, the qu what's the question? So, what word embeddings can deliver for w this? Well, word embeddings, that was the word that I didn't hear. Okay. Uh, well, they can deliver plenty in terms of, uh, you know, yeah, word embeddings. So, what, what are word embeddings? Uh, it's another distributional semantics approach. Let's look at it from that perspective. Uh, what they can uh, provide you in the simplest case is really word similarities. How is word A similar to word B in terms of the contextual usage? So if you know the sketch engine thesaurus, it's something like that. Now, uh, is it better or is it worse? It needs much more data. It might be better. We have done some comparisons uh, last December which weren't really conclusive in terms of there were data sets where, uh, for evaluation where the sketch engine thesaurus was better, there were others where, where the word embeddings were, uh, were better. Certainly, they need, in, you know, the, the biggest plus is you start from raw data. You don't, don't need any annotation like um, lemmatization and part of speech tagging and word sketch grammars and, and so on and so on. Uh, so that's a plus. On the other hand, you really need much more data. So there are a lot of languages for which you don't have enough data to provide results that would be at least on par or comparable uh, with what you can achieve uh, with, a, with a thesaurus that is based on something like a sketch grammar. Not only that, there are plenty of other approaches to that. Um, so yes, I mean, that's basically probably the answer to your question. Uh, I also wanted, I mean, so, so as not to make, make it whole about this one thing. Uh, before my talk tomorrow, there is a talk by uh, this old-fashioned uh, lexicographer, Alexander Gaikan. Are you still sitting there? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm really happy. I was really happy when he himself uh, dec uh, dec when he declared himself being old-fashioned, because when old-fashioned, <coughs> of course, I mean it ironically, lexicographers like him will be giving such excellent talks like uh, he, he is going to give tomorrow. And I know it because I hope I'm can say that I've reviewed that paper uh, about uh, how uh, you know about drafting uh, drafting dictionary entries on the fly uh, for uh, German compounds and all these kinds of things. Then uh, there is a bright future for all of us. Okay, we have to finish here. Thanks. <coughs>